Friday there was a shooting in a school in Wellington at a football game where many of our children actually go to school. During the football game there was a shooting, two people were shot. And a father came over to me yesterday in shul whose son was at the football game. And he said, Rabbi, I need to take my son out of the school. Uh, I fear for his safety. And this week's parsha begins with the words, Ki la milchama, when you go out to war. And the laws of war. What's interesting is that at the end of last week's Torah portion, we also had a different set of laws with the same identical opening, Ki la milchama, when you go out to war. But what's interesting is, sandwiched between these two sections of Ki la milchama in last week's Torah portion, and the opening of this week's Torah portion, when you go out to war, which unfortunately war is a necessary evil sometimes, there's one law sandwiched in between. And that was the concluding law of yesterday's Torah portion, and that was the law of Egla Rufa. The law of Egla Rufa is that if, God forbid, a victim is found murdered on the outskirts of the city, we measure to the closest city, we bring out all the elders of the city. In addition, the High Court of Jerusalem, the entire Sanhedrin, 71 members, have to travel to the site of the crime, and they have to say, our hands didn't spill this blood which means not that we suspect him of murder, but they didn't uh, neglect this person and they provided them with, with their protection and with their food and their resources that something like this should not occur. And then they have to ask for forgiveness. They have to say, Kaper lam chai Yisrael, God forgive and atone the innocent blood that has fallen in our community. And this is the level of responsibility that the whole community, starting from the top, have to take for the death of one innocent person. Because we know in Judaism, the famous adage in the Talmud, whoever saves one life, it's like you save an entire world. If you destroy one life, you destroy an entire world. So it's, it's even every single life has infinite value. But the question is, if the Torah is going to have two sections about war, why not do it continuously? Why interrupt the two sections of law with the law about someone found on the field? I think the answer is very relevant to the, today's day and age. The Talmud is saying, the Rekhamadeh is explaining, that during a war, the value of life is reduced. Imagine you're a soldier on the battlefield. Your comrades are dying all around you, left and right. You become desensitized to the value of each and every human life because you're in a war zone. So the Torah puts the law of the value of each individual life between the two sections about war. To say, regardless of what's going on all around you, never lose your sensitivity to the value of each individual life. One of the things that happens sometimes in a society is we talk about statistics. We depersonalize it, you know, the, the rate of crime, the rate of, of murder. And we don't realize every human life is an entire world unto itself. And I think this is more relevant today than any other generation because post 9-11, we all live in a war zone in a sense. And especially with, 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 the, with internet and with uh, cable TV. We watch terrorism around the world and including at home and we see mass killings. And therefore, when one person dies in a shooting, we're thinking, automatically, we're not as alarmed because we're already used to 30 people in a bombing here and an attack over here, 20 people, and we think of large numbers. And we forget that we have to be alarmed and we have to cry every time one human life is lost. And that's the message of Egla Rufa being between the two sections of the battle that even in a time of war, when there are, and, and in our generation, millions of Jews were murdered in the Holocaust and all the tragedies, and you can forget about every human individual life. And that's the point. The point is, never lose your sensitivity for each life. And I'll just conclude with a story that uh, I once heard. There was a rabbi, a certain Rosh Hashiva, driving with his uh, student on the highway, and they came to a toll booth. And the student had an easy pass. So he started going to the lane with the easy pass. And the rabbi said, no, 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 go to the other lane, the cash lane. The rabbi told him to do it, he did it. But then he asked the rabbi, I have an easy pass, why do you want to go to the cash lane? And the rabbi said, you could either interact with an automated uh, machine, or you could interact with a human being who was created in the image of God, B'Tselem Elohim. How could you pass up the opportunity to greet a person who is the reflection of God on earth? And I think that that's really the lesson. The lesson is that we have to have a greater appreciation for people each and every day. Every human being you encounter is a walking image of God. And when you have that value and appreciation for life, 
then you cry and you are alarmed and you react strongly to eliminate all crime, even each and every individual life.